met a gypsy. How did the Yamaha deal come about? Um, so I was, so I retired. Um, we moved to Washington for, I think it was, like I said, it was about two years. Um, I just, and then we moved back to California, like, uh, right, you know, right after the two year mark. Um, and I had a deal with Cowie as like the ambassador, um, deal with them, I guess basically what MC is kind of doing for them now. Um, but r the year, basically 14, I think it was 14, 13 or 14, they had ended up hiring I MC also. So as I was on my way out, we had, so essentially we had two of us doing the same job. Yeah. And, yeah. and this, is, this is, never talked to anybody about this. This is just, this is how me reading between the lines. So they had two of us doing the same, same job essentially. Um, and when I decided to make the jump and go to Europe, um, obviously it wasn't, you know, there was, it wasn't really, there was some bad blood inside of that, you know, like, Hey, I'm peace out on, on my team that I've been with for, for three years. I'm going somewhere else. Um, so that, you know, obviously there were some hard feelings there. Um, and my deal basically got slashed when it came up to renew after the two years that we had done, it was, it got slashed to like relatively nothing. So I'm like, okay, well in my eyes, it was more, uh, you made me an offer based on, so I couldn't go out and say, Hey, Cowie just dropped me. You, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah, Hey, yeah. here's your offer. But you know, we really don't. Yeah. like you not to sign it you yeah. know, type thing. Yeah, that's yeah. that's kind of how I... Here's an offer that you don't want to take. Exactly. Yeah. So at the number that it was, I'm like, you know what? It's been a great run. <laughs> I feel like that's really, really low. Um, let me go see what else is out there. So I, I declined it before even having Yamaha. Um, so we so we split ways after that. Because it was kind of like you were just... If you didn't get another deal, like whatever. It, yeah, if I didn't get another deal, I'll... Mitch will give me a bike. It will be a Cowie, but it'll it'll be a Pro Circuit Cowie, right? Yeah. So that's that was my thought process. But um, we were down down south, moved moved all back in down here, and and um, I actually was like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna call. I was like, I'm gonna what, what about Yamaha? So I ended up getting Keith's number, McCarty's number, um, from from somebody in the industry, and and called Keith, and I'm like, hey, I'd like to come in and meet with with you or your marketing guys or who you know whoever the whoever the guys are that i need to talk to about doing an ambassador deal i said the kids are you know mm. um, about to start riding pws it could be a good deal you know for both um surprisingly keith called me back and says yeah hey they they want to talk to you so basically keith facilitated the meeting and he was in on the meeting too um didn't really have to do much with him but he was the one that put the whole thing together so um, so I went in there and I said, look, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, um, this is, this is my idea. This is, I'm local California now. I'm, I moved back down here, so I'll be accessible for whatever you guys need. Also, the kids are starting to ride. Let's kind of build this thing. So they were like, you know what? They went back, talked about it, and then they were, they were keen on the deal. So we ended up doing it, doing a deal. Um, and then it wasn't long after that, maybe 12 months ish. So we really didn't get in the swing of things because we were just new to, new yeah, to each other, new yeah. relationship, yeah. you know. Also, it wasn't with the race team. It was with marketing. So I was, you know, I've always been around race team people, never really the marketing people other than photo shoots and things like that. So different people to learn, just different way of thinking, different working. Different language. Yeah, different yeah. language, essentially, yeah. right? So, so yes, we did some stuff for the first 12 or months, I think it was. I think I have the timeline right, but then COVID. So literally, we were, then it was obviously two years of nothing. So I went through like three years of not really knowing, your knowing place in my the, place yeah. or where it was or how it was, you know, and, and how long is this going to go for? Not, what are we going to do? You know, like it was really nothing. Um, and then the last basically two to three years, whatever, you know, we've really kind of like really caught our stride, yeah. myself and Mike Ulrich. Um, and then we also have Damon as another athlete side yeah, that kind of does, yeah. he does, uh, more of the T7 side also with, with fly racing and, and, and Western power sports. So he's, he's very involved also to, you know, so like Loretta's it's us, we share camper. So basically we have, I, I've got it to now into position where it's like me and Mike have a good relationship. We understand each other. You know, he knows just fucking call me up. Hey, we need you here. We need to do this, do this, come here, do that. Hey, you know, so it's, it's a really good, I'm really stoked with, with where it's at, yeah, you know, um, it's, 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 it, uh, yeah, like I couldn't ask for a, like a better relationship with, with the guys at Yamaha and Yamaha. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's cool 
like, Jer- Jeremy Mallott said something to me when mm. Chad was retiring. And because uh, it's funny, I said this and he was like, I was never talking to KTM. But for what I heard different that like it was him or Cooper Webb, they m- might not have ever got to Chad. But at one point in time, like that's what they were. Um, that was the conversation. And Jeremy said, it's a lot easier to keep a Chad Reed than make a new one. Mm. And it's a, it's a lot easier to keep a Ryan Villapoto than make a new one. Yep. And I think that it's so rad that you're in the position. Because how many times do you see guys just leave the sport and they're gone for good? And they there's no... It's, I also think different era too, different time. You know, like there mm, wasn't in the nineties and the two thousands. Yeah. There wasn't really there wasn't ambassadors. There wasn't there wasn't social platforms where we needed content yes. to be driven. Right. Yep, so yep. when you retired, you basically went. That was your. You went to die. Right. Like you done now. Yeah. Put out the pasture. <laughs> yeah. Put out to the pasture. <laughs> yeah. Right. Other than if you got into being okay, running a team as a team manager. Um, yeah. Or announcing. Yeah. You know, if you were getting into that position, but really there wasn't a whole lot of avenues. Um, if you were a top guy and had, you know, had followers, luckily I was able to just kind of like, I caught the Instagram yeah. wave as it started p- pretty much. Um, and worked, you know, and over my course of my career, built up to, you know, like a, but between Facebook and that, there's 2.3 million followers, um, which I don't do a lot with. Um, I, you know, I do put, I do put content out. I'm doing a lot more now with Title 24. Yeah. Um, and the and my Yamaha stuff now that we're we're in this good groove, but um, yeah, there really wasn't that platform before, you know, and that's where I think I've kind of r- realized that. You know, yeah, I can go and take my kids racing, and if, but if I don't stay engaged over here, like that's stupid on my part because there's 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 a there's a bit of income out there that that number one you can still stay relevant with, um, you still get to go ride, still get to do the the fun trips. Like that's that like I said, that's what my whole gig is now is taking fun trips and going yeah. to nice hotels or going to nice resorts and riding T sevens or going to the Armax like we did a. Grand Junction, we flew into Colorado and we did one whole day with T7s through this bitch and terrain. And then we did a whole nother day on side by sides. You know, like what more could you really ask for? Yeah, no, it's super cool. And there was, it's been very interesting to watch Yamaha over the last few years. It's like they've almost gone into, I guess, like a new. I guess like a new era in their marketing and the way that they kind of approach things. And I think KTM almost like forced the hand of a lot of people in in a way, like the Japanese manufacturers were just so copy paste, copy paste, like 98, 99. They're just conservative. You know, they take the conservative route, you know. But I think KTM kind of forced people to think a little bit differently. And I think that Yamaha just hit like this awesome sweet spot of the bikes being really good, having a lot of different stuff and getting it, you know, like we did our deal with Yamaha this year. And like come, when I got back to America, I was like, I specifically want to do this with these people. And I had like a whole plan in my head of like, this is what I would like to achieve because they like kind of get it, you know, and the bikes are really good as well so it's like it's a it's an awesome time and you know we spoke about a little bit before the show but i just feel like there's so much more shit that should and could be done you know like especially if you look at four wheels Mm. you know like the amount of content and like high level content big budget content that is out there and does move the needle for brands like it just doesn't exist in the same way in moto or adventure like sort of off-road and it's like i just came here with that in mind of like we're fucking i'm gonna try and make some of this stuff happen because it's so cool what you know what you're doing like the stuff that we kind of get to do Mm -hmm. and it's just sweet that those guys actually see the value in it now you know yeah and i think the cool thing is too is is they're also not trying to um like for me i think one of the one of the things um, is is they let me be who I want to be too. You know that's in um, maybe it's me getting older and 
that's kind of what I was talking about. Moving to a new team at, at 25, you know, you're established, you're, you know, you call your own you shots, know who you're, you, are. You're, you know who you are type thing. It's kind of the same thing now as I feel like, you know, um, they have, you know, the content or that with myself and using, utilizing me, but also I think the fans also like my raw take on, on things and, and the way I take the, put the spin on, spin on this or what I see in this interview or what I see about on the track. Um, and I've, I, I like that. I don't, you know, no, everybody wants it to be organic. Nobody wants something to be, you know, f- spoon fed. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom built TC125. Gypsy Gang.